Okay guys, um, wanted to do a update video on the Draco and also uh, do a review of this uh, Ultimat gear. Um, I got the Ultimac, uh, this is the M7-B, uh, it's like the optics uh, piston tube deal. And this one is the ACR2SS. And the SS uh, stands for standard uh, stamped, or stamp standard. Um, go ahead and get the Draco out of the way. Uh, first of all, um, this stuff looks very well made. Uh, the machining is excellent. Uh, the finish uh, excellent as well. Um, I'm gonna say on both of these things, uh, they they went out of their way to make these things extra robust. Uh, very solid feeling. This is this actually feels lighter uh, than the original components. Uh, the original uh, all you know steel. And this being aluminum feels actually lighter than its original, but uh, the rail itself is 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 a little heavy. Uh, obviously, it not being a cylinder, it doesn't have the benefit of uh, that tube um, with when you have external pressures uh, applied to it. Uh, if it's a cylinder, it it, it can combat those uh, external forces a little bit better so it only being a three-sided rail they had to beef it up a little bit uh, one of the first videos that I saw uh, for the Ultimax stuff uh, was done by a guy called the Brackish Coast and uh, he modified one uh, pretty cool looking and uh, he uh, I don't remember what the exact weight was but he said he, he had taken several ounces off of it. So uh, that's probably what I'm going to do here. Uh, one of the things that I did do, um, this is the standard length um, for the... On, on the Ultimac website, it really doesn't uh, specify a whole lot. I mean, it just kind of says, hey, this one will work with this gun, that this, that, and the other. Um, if I would have went with the compact length, which the compact length is just an inch shorter than this one, uh, the standard length is nine and five eighths inches. Uh, the compact length is eight and five eighths. So it, it would have been just an inch shorter. And uh, the ultimate, uh, the mounting system, uh, they have two sets of brackets. Uh, one that actually screws into the rail itself. And another that's more or less just kind of a uh, a saddle or something. It it clamps onto the barrel and just kind of sits there as a brace. So uh, the second set is not actually drilled and tapped. Um, and uh, with uh, this long, the standard length going on the Draco, I ended up having to uh, drill and tap this second set. Uh, you can see the gas block uh, was in the way preventing me from using that that front mounting system so I just had to drop back uh, to the secondary I went ahead and drilled it and tapped it um, So, I've already started doing some work on it. Uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and take it a little bit further, uh, which is kind of a shame because the finish is very nice on this thing. And uh, that hard coat anodizing, if, uh, if you've never tried to drill through it, it it's really pretty damn tough stuff. So, uh, I actually had to take a punch, uh, punched a little place to start my hole, drilled, tapped it, and uh, I'll eventually come back in and try to remove 
uh, some of this metal without without altering it structurally. Uh, just trying to, to remove uh, some of the unneeded weight. Uh, but like I said, it, it made very nice. Um, just uh, my one and only complaint would be that it's uh, maybe just a tad on the heavy side. Um, with with this guy, um, on the website, it, it doesn't really do... Uh, Ultimac makes some great gear, but uh, as far as uh, as far as them explaining uh, what's this, that, and the other, they really don't do a, too great of a job. Uh, they said this one is for the Draco, uh, and they even say on the website um, that uh, some of the customers complain because the the, one, the model for the Draco is a bit too short. And uh, they very sarcastically say um, that that means they know that it fits just right, which I'm going to have to uh, call them out on that. This this thing's too short. Uh, it's not as long as the one on the that that it comes with. You you can't actually use uh, the locking mechanism uh, on the AK, uh, which I guess really doesn't matter because you're clamping it to the the barrel anyways so that thing's going to be mounted solid um, just one of the issues I have is you know is it supposed to be clamped tight to this gas port which leaves this end open and exposed to where when that gas shoots down and pushes that piston back um, pretty much right here it's going to dump out hot gas uh, a lot of guys are, are getting the longer version and actually cutting it down and uh, just opening that the the end up just enough to fit over this the the gas port or the gas tube or the gas block up here on the front whatever the hell you want to call it so uh, let's get started putting this thing together uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and fast forward uh, break this guy down uh, most of you guys know how to uh, break down an AK, so I'll, I'll save some time there. Okay guys, uh, got it all stripped down. Uh, I just wanted to show you real quick. Um, uh, these two uh, gas tube uh, portions but it's uh, nearly three sixteenths uh, or a little over three sixteenths uh, difference uh, may not be anything uh, but uh, when you put it on the when you put it on the gun you can see um, see it, it makes it makes no contact at all back here. Uh, it might actually be a good thing that it's short. I, I mean, again, I don't know, but you know, it just being that far off just just kind of threw me a little bit. So, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this thing mounted up. Um, obviously, it comes with uh, all your mounting hardware a bunch of allen screws I'm not going to tighten this thing up. Uh, I'm just going to pretty much get it to where it's halfway there. That way, once I get the rail on, it'll give me some uh, leeway to kind of slide it back and forth. Actually, 
actually loosen it. But uh, as you can see, it's on there, and uh, you know if you if you get it tight up on that gas block up here, it's just not making contact uh, back here. So we'll see how that works uh, when we go to test fire it. I don't know if it, it, like I said, it might not be an issue at all, but it's just one of those things that kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, with the rail itself, uh, uh, from a uh, it, with the, the mounting hardware that it comes with, uh, you'll want to use some grease just to kind of hold stuff in place to keep it from uh, getting away from you. If you blob a little grease, whether it's grease or Vaseline or something that, that's kind of tacky that uh, will hold some pieces in place. On this back end, uh, you'll get these little wedges that slide. And there's little troughs uh, right here. So they'll, they'll slide and expand in that little trough. And you just want to put just a little bit of grease on there just to hold them in place until you get it on there. Let's see if I can do this without knocking crap off. So once it's in there, I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit so my wedges don't fall out of place. And then your front bracket, you'll want to kind of slip that through. And like I said, I couldn't use the the, the front mounting uh, area. I had to use this uh, this rear. in and I had to drill and tap it and you'll want to kind of keep an eye uh, make sure that those the gap between those two brackets are kind of the same on each side just to make sure it's not leaning too hard one way or the other but once you get those on there you can tighten them up pretty good and then go back and uh, tighten that rear And you can see that those little uh, triangular wedges uh, fill the gap uh, right there at the end. And you want to wipe that excess grease off of there. But now that my rail's nice and tight, I can go back and kind of eyeball this top rail into place so 
So there you go. Uh, relatively easy to do. Um, again, if you do have the Draco and you don't want to uh, be bothered with this, uh, the drilling and the tapping portion, uh, go ahead and get the compact version. It'll sit just an inch shorter and uh, give you a lot less uh, headaches to deal with. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, dress it up a little bit. Okay guys, here we are back again. Uh, got all the, the extra cosmetic type stuff uh, put on there. Um, as you can see, the the U.S. Palm uh, FDE, it, I don't know if you can tell or not, it's a little different color, uh, but it's pretty damn close, uh, so uh, pretty much matches up uh, for me. Uh, I, I just wanted to show you uh, real quick this, this uh, Blackjack uh, recoil buffer uh, back here in the rear. Uh, when this when this thing is uh, suppressed, it'll be uh, you know, it usually is a little harder. Uh, uh, suppressed weapons are a little harder on the host, so this guy will be slamming back just a little bit harder, and hopefully that recoil buffer. Uh, will keep my uh, rear trunnion from getting beat up. Uh, but like I said, um, maybe with this Ultimac, uh, some of that uh, that extra gas uh, will be vented uh, out of this uh, exposed port there. Um, as you can see, um, with this this gas port or gas tube being just a hair shorter than the, the factory uh, it leaves a little bit of an exposed area so uh, maybe shooting suppressed uh, that that ends up uh, helping me out more than anything uh, because when you shoot suppressed a, a lot of a lot of extra fouling end up coming back and getting inside your gun so uh, that actually might end up uh, being a huge benefit to me. Uh, like I said, I don't know. Uh, and uh, I'm definitely not a uh, AK uh, Smith. So. Can't, can't tell you there. But, uh, this is the Hundred Hounds Kestrel. Uh, you can check out some of my other videos and uh, see some of the reviews on it. Uh, but I, I really do like uh, this can on this setup. Um, I've shot uh, uh, 726 7.62 by 39 through uh, a couple of suppressors and uh, the 7.62 by 39 just is a has a brutal bark to it um, even through some some top dollar uh, suppressors uh, it it doesn't it doesn't tone them back quite as much as the uh, as some of the American uh, made ammo. I guess I'm, I'm more thinking uh, of the wolf or the brown bear or the silver silver bear. Uh, some of that ammo, it's just, it's hot as shit. It's loud as fuck. Even uh, through a, a suppressor. Uh, with a suppressor, you, you're obviously dealing with a couple of different factors. Uh, you're dealing with the sonic crack of that bu bullet going uh, supersonic. And you're also dealing with the percussive force of that bullet uncorking from the end of your barrel. Uh, this Hunter Town Arms is, is a relatively cheap uh, suppressor. Uh, I think it was right under $500 uh, for a rifle uh, rifle suppressor. That's that's dirt cheap. 
and it does a real good job of toning down that percussive uh, blast. Uh, this is, I think, a ten and a half inch uh, barrel. Uh, anytime you shoot uh, short barrels uh, through a suppressor, um, you're making that suppressor work a hell of a lot harder uh, than it needs to. Um, the suppressor sounds decent on a 16-inch uh, gun. It's definitely hearing safe. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that it, it falls in the hearing safe. Uh, I, I mean, it may. Uh, we we don't have a, a decibel meter, but it definitely uh, really uh, makes it makes a difference. Uh, when you're standing next to your buddy shooting or whatever, you can talk to them, uh, you know, with uh, no hearing protection on. Um, obviously, it, it it tweaks your ears just a little bit of that uh, that supersonic crack, uh, you know, going out there and bouncing off the tree line. But the percussive force uh, really gets toned back. Um, so, really do like that. Uh, Hunter Town Arms on this setup. Uh, this aim point, uh, it it looks like it's going to work out pretty good for me. Uh, obviously, don't have a, a stock on this thing yet. Uh, have no idea uh, what the wait time uh, for ATF uh, paperwork on SB and SBRing is anymore. Uh, it used to be six months. Uh, I, I'm hearing it's it's eight months to a year now uh, but that's definitely going to be the hardest part with this project is uh, being patient and waiting for that to come in um, so I really can't get a good cheek weld uh, and, and to know uh, where this uh, this sight lines up uh, it definitely uh, when you use the iron sights uh, it's it's definitely right in the bottom of the uh, the tube and uh, when that lights on I don't know if you can see that or not or if it's too bright uh, when you look down it uh, that red dot basically sits uh, right on the top of this this hood here so it, it kind of acts as a uh, you know kind of a uh, a secondary uh, Kind of helps you, you know, fi find that dot. Uh, it would definitely uh, be a hell of a lot nicer uh, when I have a stock on this thing. But there you have it. Um, this is the Ultimat gear. Uh, uh, very well made, uh, very robust, uh, great finish, uh, super. Uh, looking uh, mill work on these things uh, like I said uh, the only real complaint I have is maybe with the rail uh, being just a, just a had tad on the over uh, robust side and the um, I'll have to see uh, how this this, this shorter tube uh, operates um, with that that being open right there, uh, I I don't know. I haven't haven't given this a uh, a test test fire yet. So keep your fingers crossed for me, and uh, thanks for watching.